Namaste, hola, bonjour. Welcome back to our next episode of the Tech Trivia Show. Wishing you all a very happy new year and our sincere thanks for writing to us and liking the first episode. Please do keep writing to us at hashtag Tech Trivia Show. Your feedback is valuable and we read every comment. Now on that note, let's start with our first segment, Fast Wheel, where we present the telecom news from all around the world. Apple confirmed that they're acquiring London-based music and image recognition service, Shazam, one of the earliest players in the world of mobile music. This is part of Apple's larger ambitions in the music business. Now, Apple did not disclose the price, but it's estimated to be about $400 million. Shazam's core business is music recognition. People use its app to capture a music clip that's playing and then match that against Shazam's extensive database to tell you what that song is. Apple Music and Shazam appear to be a natural fit. But this might lead to some interesting questions with Siri. Yo, Siri! How can I help? Yeah, this, uh, this song my cab driver's playing, what is it? That's not my work anymore. Ask Daddy's newly adopted kid. Yeah. Say what? Yeah, you heard it. He adopted someone called Shazam. Cool. Connect me to her. How do you know it's her? It's a nap! How do I know it's her? Are you serious? This is serious. What? No. Then? To get you the name of the song. Oh god, look, cool, forget it, we're done. We're gonna listen to whatever is trending on iTunes. Verizon Communications will pay around $2.25 billion for a five-year partnership with the NFL, the National Football League. This will allow users to stream games on Verizon's Yahoo and Go90 platforms, as well as on mobile devices. Now Verizon estimates that it's gonna reach more than 200 million digital users in the US alone. This move is said to be an attempt to expand their mobile advertising platform. Now that's fair enough, but we've got calling, we've got messaging. I think pretty soon people are only gonna want one thing. Atos has entered the ring. Jamalto is completely caught unaware. Atos sneaking up, bobbing, weaving. He hits him, he tries to hit, it's a miss, it's a miss. Atos has missed. Oh, there's a new entrant into the ring. Tails has entered the ring. Atos doesn't know what to do. Tails has entered the ring. He swings. He's doing oh, Atos is down for the count. They're on for the count. Tails has knocked out Atos. Now you might be wondering, am I talking about characters for the next script of Rocky Seven? No. These are not names of characters from any movie, but actual company names. In a very interesting bidding game, French aerospace specialist Tails knocked out Atos's unsolicited attempt to buy Jamalto, not Gelato, the Italian ice cream, Jamalto, a Dutch cybersecurity provider. Tails outbid Atos with a cash offer of $5.6 billion against Atos's offer of $5 billion, which was wet slapped by Jamalto as too low. Both Tails and Atos were drawn by Jamalto's security products that help protect companies and governments against data hacks and identity theft in an increasingly connected world. This transaction was Europe's biggest technology deal last year. The Office for National Statistics, ONS in the UK, has reported that mobile phone data could be used in place of census questions in the future. The information from mobile phones would allow the ONS to track where people live and work. The ONS report said it used commuter flow data from Vodafone users collected over four weeks in March and April of 2016 in three London boroughs and then compared that against the data from last census. The report concluded that the two sets of data had a good correlation. It's also true, confusion can arise in cases where people are working from home or traveling a short distance to reach the office. So I guess with the next census, if they find a high income level with people who are mostly staying at home, we might wonder if there's a basement laboratory. Breaking bad too. In Vietnam, the Ministry of Information and Communications, MIC, has issued the country's fifth 4G license, this time to Vietnam Mobile, the fourth largest mobile operator in the country. With only 3.5% market share, Vietnam Mobile 
is yet to reveal its strategy for building out its 4G network. Once again, Singapore had the fastest mobile broadband speeds in Asia Pacific and the fastest fixed broadband rates globally. The average mobile download speed was 51.5 GB per second, placing it top in Asia and fourth worldwide behind Norway, the Netherlands, and Iceland. Sometimes good things do come in small packages, both Singapore and him. It's tough to maintain a healthy national economy when most banks on the planet won't even accept your business. That's the dilemma facing North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, as mounting economic sanctions cut his country out of the world economy. To stave off a looming financial crisis, Kim has turned to what may be the nation's best hope, Bitcoin. Yes, the popular cryptocurrency is attractive precisely because of its decentralized nature. It's internet money, essentially uncontrollable by any single actor. Now, as per sources, North Korea has spent the last few years building up an investment in Bitcoin. And back in April, news emerged that the country had even stolen a hefty pile of cryptocurrency between 2013 and 2015. At the time, 73 Bitcoins were valued at roughly $88,000. In today's market, they'd be worth $1.26 million. Now, this could be very interesting if one day North Korea controlled all the cryptocurrency and the tables were turned and it said to the banks, who's your daddy now? A city with tall buildings, shiny cars, and golden iPhones, Dubai. They have become the first city in the world to get their own Microsoft font. Yes, that's right. Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed, Dubai's crown prince and chairman of the executive council, has launched the Dubai font. He has directed government institutions all across the city to adopt the font, saying it is considered a positive shift to boost the Emirates' competitiveness in smart technology. Now, this is the least that could have been expected from a monarchy with custom-made golden Lamborghinis and golden iPhones. You might have guessed by now what the color of the font will be. And eventually, if Siri has some competition, that AI assistant might be called the Golden Lady. Moving on to our next segment, Face Off with Tech, where we talk about the latest tech news from around the world. Our main story for the segment is around China's all surveillance policy. Watch this story, covered by the BBC. <laughs> Well, let's see how long it uh, takes you to find me. Thank you very much. Let's go. Well, here we are then. I've just got out of the car close to the city centre. And for the purposes of this exercise, the plan is for me to start walking in the direction of the bus station. My image has already been flagged to the authorities as a suspect and in theory, it should only be a matter of time. So already on this bridge, I can see one, two, three CCTV cameras. Of course, there's no point hiding from them. Just keep on walking. Uh oh. Right behind me, you can see uh, just over, over my left shoulder there. Hello, guys. I've been expecting you. Oh, maybe these guys aren't in on the joke. You're being watched. I'm being watched. I, you're watching me. <laughs> Listen, reports of a similar need of surveillance are coming from all around the world. In fact, the International Federation of Wives is demanding a similar capability to keep an eye on all the husbands. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, honey, if you're watching, I didn't mean that. Good news for all the Harry Potter fans. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has signed a licensing agreement with mobile game studio Jam City to create Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, a mobile interactive role-playing game. Now, the app will enable players to create their own characters 
and experience life as a Hogwarts student. Wow. Fantasy plus mobile game equals Megan Fox from Transformers. WhatsApp is set to launch its standalone business app to enable businesses to communicate directly with users. The dedicated business app will feature three different accounts, a verified account, confirmed account, and unverified account. They have even added tools for users to control business messaging within a chat. For example, users will be able to block and report accounts as spam anytime they wish. And just when we thought that WhatsApp was all about group chats and forwarded messages, now they've come along with a nerdy business app. So there's no more escape from meetings. Thanks, WhatsApp. Russia, which gave us a gloomy sense of humor, intelligent hackers, and Donald Trump? Well, today there is an AI helper in Russia that makes fun of you, and apparently it's wildly popular. The Russian-based tech giant Yandex launched a Russian-speaking personal assistant called Alice recently, and unlike Siri or Alexa, the program relies less on scripted responses and more on what is learned by consuming conversational data consumed from the web, news articles, and even a little Russian literature. For example, if someone were to tell Alice, I'm sad, they might get the response, no one said that it was going to be easy. Which sounds like my mother. But this chatbot with attitude has proved to be a huge success, attracting in Russia alone 1.5 million daily users. The tiniest mobile phone in the world is smaller than your thumb. No kidding. Look at this. Do we really need this? Moving on to our last segment, instant telecoffee. Such innovation to help needy kids is a motivation to all. We all know Heineken, right? Well, currently they sell more than 8.5 million barrels of their various beer brands in the US alone. And they hope to ramp that up with results thanks to the use of big data and artificial intelligence. Apparently, they're launching interactive bottles. That means these bottles will have 50 individual components and sensors, including LED lights, that turn beer bottles into connected devices. They'll be able to respond to the beat of the music in the club so that every bottle becomes part of the party. Really? You see, two beers down, and I always find everything starts dancing anyway. The entire point seems moot. The mobile industry is harnessing big data to help public agencies and NGOs tackle epidemics, natural disasters, and environmental pollution. Have a watch. Through the GSMA, mobile operators are establishing a common framework and ecosystem approach that can support strategic planning, decision making, and support preparedness and response to help people recover from a disaster, contain an epidemic, and contend with environmental pollution. 
That's it from our side, guys. Thank you for watching the show, and do share your stories with us. We'll feature them in future episodes. Don't forget to like and share the video, and tweet to us at hashtag TechTriviaShow. Thanks a lot. Thank you.